So uh, just going to tell you about Aero and the stuff that we do and the sort of work that we get involvement in government and shaping policy. So we're based, o based over Mussey. Um, we have a small team there. We're around a long time, since about 2006. Um, and what we do is we develop mapping tools, spatial analysis, sociodemographic to try and inform policy decisions across the country. Um, we have some key collaborators, UCD School of Geography, work with them a lot, Ordinary Survey Ireland and then ICLRD in all island type work. Most of our work is in government semi-state agencies and analytics, um, mainly the Irish planning system, and we develop these national mapping and analytics tools. I'm going to talk to you about some of those in a few minutes, but we do a lot of work internally in Maynooth as well on, let's say, we're developing these hubs on ethnicity and diversity for Tina Swan. We work at MU Admissions and College Connect, so all sorts of data and uh, analytic stuff. We've also recently uh, spun out a, a consultancy called People in Place and we have a couple of full-time staff in there at the moment so that's going well too. Um, so Irish planning system, most of the work we do is in this area at the national level, national planning framework, at the regional level, regional spatial economic strategies and then policy stuff at the local level is all our local authorities, our county development plans, local economic and plans, all sorts of stuff to do with housing, retail, and community, all sorts of stuff. So we try and feed data into these systems. Key thing that we have and a very important collaboration we have is with an Ordnance Survey. So what they do is they provide this national platform, this data, uh, technology platform. We do all the research and the analytics and build our tools on top of those. So we were this cowboy unit over in Aero in the past. Now we have actual real sustainability whereas we can build our tools, plug them into Ordnance Survey, GeoHive, and it's part of the national data infrastructure. So that means it's a big thing for us. We can build these tools that are going to last and stick around. So I'm going to talk about some of those in a few minutes. Um, one of them is environmental sensitivity mapping. So this is an ongoing tool with EPA, where we take all the environmental data for the country um, related to strategic environmental assessment, put it in viewers like this, so if you're a planner in a local authority, or you're in the EPA or in the government department, you want to find out about all sorts of environmental data, you can get our tools and view it. So this is looking at radon maps and the amount of radon that is across the country, so it doesn't look good. There's a lot of radon in place across Ireland, but that's just an example. But a key thing that we have in this is this widget or analytics tool where you can do an environmental sensitivity analysis of your area in about two or three minutes using all this modeling in the background. Prior to that, you'd be talking about a week or two for someone in a local authority to get the data, do the analysis. So it's these advance, advances in technology that are bringing our tools forward to make it easier for people to work with them. Housing such a big issue in Ireland. We have this Dublin Housing Observatory mapping viewer with the four Dublin local authorities. All sorts of data there on housing across Dublin, on the amount of exchequer funding that's there to support the private rental sector, homelessness, um, deprivation indices, and this map here is looking at house prices across Dublin. That's my house down there, by the way, 950,000 euro down there. But it just shows very quickly looking at housing across Dublin and prices. You can see the demographic structure of the city, and it's the same in most places where you're all from, your own towns, or some places are more expensive than others. So that's an example of a set of data that's out there. It's not easy to get access to. We mobilize it and make it available to viewers like this to people to use it and to make better decisions on it, whether it's for housing or policy or whatever it is. Key stuff that we work in is the national planning framework. This is the whole policy context that we work in. So the national planning framework, we produce so much data and mapping analytics to feed into this decision making. This is how the country is going to operate for the next five, ten years. When it came out, there was not one map in the entire planning framework because maps are essentially very political things. So if you present a map and you bring it into the Doyle Chamber and there's a dot there for whatever Bon Clody, but there's nothing there for Bon Crana, it causes a lot of stuff. So the best decision, leave the maps out. Don't put them in the policy documents. So we do a lot of work in that sort of area. Regional level, the three regional spatial economic strategies, we developed all these reports and data feeding into them. And a key thing, new tool that we've coming out being launched on the 29th of November is this regional development monitor. So this is going to be all the data about the country in key themes, our people and places, our green and sustainable future, our region's economy. So we're going to have a big launch in the National Gallery at the end of this month and this tool is going to go live. What it does, it takes data from all these sources across the country, from SEI, Fulcher, Ireland, IDA, loads of different data there that we pull in. We bring it into our Aero 
kind of magic box here that transforms the data, adds value to it, puts in time series, puts in geographies, and then it all comes into our tool here. So people like you in the room are chief executives of local authorities or heads of government bodies and so on can get in and look at the data in a much more easy format. <clears throat> they don't have to go searching for the stuff, getting access to it, getting Excel files, trying to get graphs done, all that. It's all taken care of. And they can change the data if they want to look at, look at different regions, look at counties, see trends. So different examples of these sorts of things. This one here is looking at <clears throat> housing vacancy and the reason for vacancy across the country. We hear this 144,000 vacant properties across the country. That's not the case. There's loads of reasons why property is vacant that's out there, whether it's in the rental market, the people who own it are deceased, so it's going through this transition period of people in nursing homes. So trying to flip this stuff that's there doesn't work. This is going to help loads of people in the planning system. All these strategies, development plans, local economic acuity plans, they can all get access to the data, start using it. They got to do nothing. It's all done from there. That's what we do. Thank you.